Hello and welcome to the Black Mind Games Podcast episode. Well, who the fuck gives a shit? Wait, there's already an M. Oh, okay. Uh, 366. So, woo. That's exactly what the podcast it. Yep. Yeah, that's the number. That's the number. Yep. Um, joining me this week is Josh. How are you, Josh? I'm okay. I it, came back from magic and had magic fun Josh, time. Jo- Josh could have had fun today. He could have participated in the battle of the hosts. Chose not to. I could have, but nope. Instead, me and jo- me and Alan. Hi, wow. Alan. How are you? Wow. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> we, had a, we had an epic duel. It was the mightiest duel. It was a good game, actually. <laughs> it was probably... It was a hard. fucking draw. But if we'd gone probably one more turn, I would have absolutely lost my commando. I think you would have lost your fucking Vindicator. And I think your Rifleman was fucking doomed after that. I'm pretty sure, yeah. I'm your pretty your sure. Banshee was really out of position, dude. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was, oh, there was a Rifleman on the post. And I'm like, was... I got Centurion coming over. I'm like, cool, I've got to... <laughs> so, so for anyone who's wondering, there was one crippled mech. Alan, what mech was crippled? Uh, it wasn't. It was crippled. Um, Couldn't fire uh, any of, weapons the, 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 the at th- all. But the thing is, is like, yeah. Except all I'm going to do is run it up to someone and punch it in the back of the head. You know, the mech that was close to it. The Centurion with an <laughs> yes! AC twenty. Yes. I'm sorry. I would rather it shoot at the fucking thunderbolt than the fucking. Than anything else, and just like, nah, hoo, hoo, hoo. oh shit, that's a thunderbolt. <laughs> Has no weapons, but it coming for me. It, it angry. <laughs> it it angry thunderbolt. Angry. It a very angry thunderbolt. It was um, I'm still mad that you got fucking both sensors on that because I would prefer the plus two, but whatever. <laughs> that was such a good roll. That was such a good pair of rolls too. I'm just sitting there, and I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, pick up my dice, and I was like, like what? I'm like roll and i'm like okay i got two criticals and alan goes what i'm like no i knew that was coming i was like okay two 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 criticals let's see where you go the first one was like all right sensors like what the fuck does sensors do and we're like oh it doesn't do anything and then i'm like look sit there look yep he rolls again he's like yep i'm like oh and there goes the other sensors and i just flipped open the page and looked at where sensor damage was for the fucking cockpit it's like such a da- sensors cockpit um ah shit well i can't shoot no more with that thing i was just sitting there just like what the fuck is this bullshit it was it was a great it was fun. It was a good game. There was things. Alan's dice apparently hate his guts and no, refused. They were, to, ro- they were rolling fine. They were rolling eight to pro- seven. Pro- <laughs> well, yeah, but I needed like nines and tens. Yeah. And when I, the moment I started needing eights, I wasn't getting eights. I'm just yeah. like, uh. But like there the was, first. For that first that one roll at the start of the game though where I was like yep and I hit you for alright that's six damage uh, to explain oh. to the uninitiated there was there was ports in that game where Alan so there was a part in that game where Alan literally like moved up and I'm like okay great and so Josh to explain it to you like this imagine if you have like two like tramples and one guy to defend it, and you're just like, no, fuck you. I'm just gonna fucking like hurt you really bad. I'm gonna hurt you really, really bad. There was a there was a moment I did forty damage to one of Alan's banshees. Mind you, it's a banshee, so like the thing like basically like just shrugs it off, but it was still forty damage. So I mean, like no, no matter what was gonna happen there, I would like uh, that forty damage because that was the most damage you did that turn. And then every turn after that, it was like at most, I think, what, 15? 20? No. There was he... 20 damage I did to the Griffin. Um, There was 20 damage I did to the T-Bolt, too. Yeah, but those were on the same turn. No, those were on different turns. The Griffin, I did 20 damage at the end. No, no, no. The, the 20 damage was over two turns, because I didn't have to make a PSR at the very end. Yes, okay. And the Thunderbolt was 20 damage over two turns. I know that first fact because that was, oh, I got shot, moved, shot again. Oh, look, that's a headshot. No, because I'm pretty sure what happened was I did two AC-10s on the T-Bolt, and I hit both of them, and one went into the arm and one went into the head. No, because it wasn't the, 
It was an LRM that hit the, the cockpit. No, it was an AC-10. That was... No, because the reason why... Because I got hit by the... Because uh, the Griffin got hit by the two AC-10. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, and it, that's why I'm, I'm talking like, about midway through the game. No, no, I know. I didn't, I got hit... I, every time the T-ball got hit by the uh, your rifleman, it only got hit once. It, no, I'm pretty sure it got hit twice. Yeah, yeah, but I think it, it got hit once with one auto cannon. I moved away, and then I got hit with something else. So I got hit with the PPC for the second. No, you got hit with the you got hit with two AC tens because I missed with the PPC. You did a pilot check on the T bolt. Yes, but it wasn't that same turn. No, it was a completely different turn. Yeah, and it was it, was, it was it wasn't two AC tens that hit it. I no, know it that. Was... I know that because one of the one of the hits was an LRM ten hit. Yes, that was after the two AC tens. No, it, they didn't hit. What? No, there was one AC ten that hit, and it was a. I swear it was a PPC. I know it was a PPC action. It, it's semantics, anyways, because yeah. it's just well, damage, cause, cause right? It's, it's still it's still ten damage regardless. And mm. That's how I know that because yeah. the second but, time you because the moment I moved away from the rifleman, you couldn't shoot it. Yeah. So there was, there was things in that game where definitely it was like okay. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just like, I'm like, oh my god, I want to like have a game where I'm just, I'm not getting fucked over by terrain. Because every game I've had since my first couple matches, Alan lost every single initiative for like what five turns. Well, no, that, but that wasn't the problem. For me. No, because I, I got I got initiative on the last three turns, and that really like you were like, uh, shit, because that that put you in a bit of a bit of a pickle with me moving away and breaking contact with two two mechs. Yeah, and then, bit. and then, uh, but every other game I've lost initiative, and on top of losing initiative, I've not had any good maps to play on. Where mm -hmm. I've been like, this complements my lance. No, it's been like, oh hey, look, I'm I'm I have all this terrain in front of me, and then a big open chasm, and then vi and then a lot of field and cover for that guy's side. So like, what the fuck am I doing? And it's it's been that way for everything. And I'm actually like, I was really, I'm just like, I brought out some of my maps. And I was gonna be like, yeah, let's use one of my maps. We'll use one of my maps because I was gonna use one. Of the, I was gonna, I was gonna consider bringing out the two kid map, and then I looked at one of the two kid maps. And I was like, no, 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 not till we get to thirty fifty. Not till we get to thirty fifty. I know why. Anyways, anyways, how are you, Josh? Pretty good. You good? Yeah. I uh. I bought some Unaffinity packs. Mm -hmm. and I got some pulls, out, good pulls out of it. So, woo! Also, I forgot they put special foiling on uh, some of the cards. They got Galaxy foiling. Think like Yu-Gi-Oh! or Pokemon when they have uh, a star kind of a uh, look to them. That's basically what they are. They have mm -hmm. like, a star foiling pattern going on. It's it, They have that going on in the cards now. But it's only on the unset. And uh, I, I don't know, I kind of like it. This looks good. Oh, also, uh, there's two different sets of basic lands you can get in the, in the collector boosters. And there's mm -hmm. a chance you can get a shock. And it's painful. Because <laughs> uh, in a collector booster box, you could potentially get two, maybe three, if you're super lucky. Like, that's that's abysmal. That's abysmally low. Uh, like before like you get like shocks and stuff and like a collector booster it's roughly should be like five if you were to like trying to get special lands and stuff but fuck that it's just kind of oh well freaking yeah yeah anyway you could have you could, would you rather have played in the battle tech ho battle of the hosts uh me I, I don't know maybe mm -hmm. or just play more magic I mean, you. I mean, one of them sounds better to me. We could do all three. I could. We could play Magic: The Gathering, and the Battle of the Hosts. Uh could. Yeah. Kinda, I. If anything, I didn't realize there was a Battle of the Hosts, so I was like, oh. Yeah, this was this was me and Alan planning it. So, I, I, the only reason why I'm calling it the Battle of the Hosts is because it's funny. I see. Yeah. Anyways, anyways, we got to talk about funny shit. Alan, you here? 
Yep, I'm still here. Okay, Alan, what's your opinion on... Uh, we gotta ask a question, okay? This is a very important question, okay? Alan, have you watched the Gundam series? Nope. Okay. Well, we're not going to talk about that right now because I don't. Uh, I don't. I don't really plan to. Like, <laughs> it doesn't appeal to me. I, like I've I've seen the designs of, of the backs and stuff. I'm just like ah. It. You know what it is. You know what's really funny. Mm. So everyone right now in that series has been like drawing comparison between it and Iron Blood Orphans. I honestly think Iron Blood Orphans is better. I honestly, because that prologue is great. It's wonderful. It's fantastic. You're like, oh, that's peak Gundam. You know, everyone fucking dies. War is bad. Soldiers' oh. lives mean lives mean something. Okay. So there's, a, so there's a prequel episode of the anime, and it's just amazing. It's perfect. It's like 30 minutes of greatness. And then you get to the series. And you're like, okay, I, I look forward to this. This is going to be great. And then you're like, wait, hold on. So one of the characters is literally being sold off and used as, like, leverage to control all of the other men in the school. What the fuck? Like, the top guy, the guy who beats everyone else gets the chance to marry her? What the fuck? How does this shit make sense? <laughs> I don't know. The mech, anim the mech concepts are cooler. But you know what it made me realize? I think I want an Amer Civil War anime. No, I wouldn't want it. I'm good. I, I'm I, very good. No, I'm good. I think I would just rather watch Tech Stocks Battle Tech, honestly. Um, the, or, oh, or, my God. Any I, of have, the... I have very little faith in because I've heard some things about the new anime. Oh. I've heard nothing good. It's I've heard, like... I've heard just dumb shit about it. I'm just like, oh, hey, look. It's almost like a lot of people didn't realize this about Iron Blood Orphan. You guys have fucking sucked the dick of that company since that show came out. And no one has realized that that show is actually bad. And then you've got a really bad show to follow it up. And you yeah. really didn't want that. And nobody realized that. I Because even when I was watching Iron Blood Orphan, like, the first season's okay. And then you it's get to fine. the rest, and then you get to the second season. And you're like, "This is shit, man." Because like this, because the entire plot of the entire plot thread of what like the show was built on falls apart just entirely. Yeah. It's <laughs> Orga just being like, "Like fuck it, I can be king of Mars." It's it's so dumb because it doesn't follow with what the fucking character had, had it. Yeah, it's whatever. Anyways, I've already fucking there, there's the two there's two faceness. Um, but um uh, uh, but the problem another major problem is um. Uh, that uh um the new the newer stuff is like even even like with fucking what's its name I can't remember what um yamara no um uh, describe his name the new show with uh the movie that came out oh hathaway 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 um, the moment you kind of sit down and break down some of like the logic and philosophy in the show, it kind of just immediately falls apart. Yeah, but that's kind of—I think that's kind of the point of Hathaway is that the logic that Hathaway and Zeons have kind of falls apart. Yeah. Um, as much as I love the look of Hathaway, um, I don't expect much from any of the next couple of movies. But like, I've kind of I haven't really like I don't really think a lot of the newer Gundam stuff is very good. I like I... Unicorn. I like Unicorn season one. That's it. I liked it. I liked it actually for the thing where like the Zeon remnants just co like come out with fucking just old ancient mechs and just fucking rattle the fucking Federation around for a bit and then promptly get slapped around by newer mechs. And I'm just like, yeah, that's about right. I don't know why why we expected this to go any other way, but hey, that's beside the point. I think they just I wanted mean, to. I think they I, I, like. And then I stopped. And I was like, wait, no, I know why they did this. Kona, uh, fucking um. That's the company that fucking owns um, Gundam. Bandai. Bandai just wanted to sell sell new fucking miniatures. Yeah, basically, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. Okay, and I'm I'm not upset because a lot of a lot of the mechs in that in that that battle for uh, uh Earth. No, uh, Teletum, te uh, Trotum. Yeah. Bay, whatever it is, that battle yeah. is like some of the best mechs out there. But the problem is that uh. I like I'm like I found out about that like a full year after that, so I didn't get to find it. But whatever. 
Um, I, I, I personally think, so I agree with you. Unicorn's like, okay. And then you get to the end of Unicorn and you're like, what? What the fuck? What? The Guess fuck? The fuck? Yeah. So this one is like, okay, let me put it like this. The prequel is probably like a solid, like eight out of 10. It's, it's a very simple story and it's very well done. Okay. This is like, this is like having a burger and then and then opening up the burger and realizing that there's a hair on it and your entire day is just ruined. You're like, ah, oh, there's one thing like nothing makes sense all of a sudden. And maybe this maybe the original stuff was better. Like if you were comparing this to 08 MST and like. If you were comparing this show to OSMS MS team, OSMS MS team sits there last and then pushes it into the ground slowly. That's this show. Um, so I, I, I don't know. I'm going to keep watching it. I, I, I stopped watching IBO, but I liked some of the mobile suit designs and stuff like that. I liked. Some I really did like the. I really didn't like the name design in MBO I, I, or IB, IBO. I really didn't like it. I and I liked some of the characters and I liked some of the plots. The characters, felt, the characters are the best thing about IBO. Uh, yes. I, that I will freely admit. That is like a hard yes. Except until, until, until you get until you get fucking season two. At that point, you're fucking fucked. So oh, one no. of the characters just fall apart. They get assassinated. Did you get to? Season. Did you get to the part where Space Guts goes through tremendous loss? Yes, I watched the whole series. Okay. In, oh, in, a, in like three days. So I had it all fresh in my mind that one day when I came out fucking swinging at you. Like I had finished, I had finished, I processed it for like an hour, and then I just came fucking swinging at you. Like, nah, this shit shit. No, that was the reason why that was such a fast hard. This is what this is. I, I hate had, this show. It was because the thing is, I got to a certain point. I got to a very specific point in the show, and I think it was, I think it was the third episode of season two. Yeah. And I knew the moment I got to that, when I watched that episode start, I was like, I'm not going to like this season. The season's yeah, going to be bad. Because it doesn't actually, it's not actually going to develop the things that you, uh, that it should be developed. It's like, and like, as somebody put, uh, tried to put on YouTube, it's like, oh yeah, they're the villains. I'm like, no, they're not. They are they're not supposed the good, to be the villains. They are, it's, it's not even that they're not supposed to be the villains. Because like the way that everything is developed out in the previous season, mm. the bad guys are the knights. This isn't like, oh, the, the the knights are like a misguided order. It's like, no, they are just straight up the bad guys because of like, like because you pay attention to how the rest, of the, the rest of the universe is. The knights are bad guys because of this, 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 this. There's straight pirates. up pedophiles. Then you, uh, there's this, there's pirates with this, 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 this. Your main proprietor backup is a fucking mafia. Soci- is essentially a sociopath. You're tied to the mafia. Mind you, that isn't actually all that un- uncommon in history. The good guys actually have t- uh, connections to criminal criminal networks. I Pie believe the, Frank Sinatra the, used his Pie mafia the allies. ties. No, yeah, the oh, the, no. Al- the allies during World War II had connections with the Italian mafia. <laughs> no, nobody knows this. Like, the Italian mafia didn't like the fascists. Surprise, surprise. Yo, Tony, they're going to cost us money in the long run. We should they, favor the uh, allies. Ironically, yes, that is kind of the reason why they did that. Um, those fucks are going to cost us money. The, we should just the, take the, them out. <laughs> the, 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 then you have, but like, like I got to like, and I'm trying to understand because like by the time like season two, like it, and it wasn't a big jump between episode, uh, the end of season one and season two. I think it's what? Six months. Yeah. A no, year at most. I think it's like two years. No, it's not. It, it's really a short period of time. It's like very short, dude. Hold on. I think because uh, I think it's a year. I think it at most is a year jump because they're still on Earth. They haven't been able to, and they've only pulled some assets off. Um, because the knights are still reeling from that defeat on them. Yeah, and, and it's like, and I and I can understand that, but I'm just like sitting there. And, but like, even the way that the characters are acting, like. Mm-hmm. There was an arc in that one that one year that needed to be shown for that fucking second season to work. Yeah. Um, but I'm rambling about a, mo- a show I, I, I've generally already fucking beaten over the head with a fucking lead pipe. I left mean, to die yeah. in the ditch. I, I mean, if I may say something very quickly. Uh-huh. I think Josh wants to talk about competitive uh, fucking competitive races. 
<laughs> yep. <laughs> I, I'm looking forward to that conversation because we are going to talk about that shit. Yeah. Josh, I mean, but, like, I but, mean but, finish, but finish up your point real quick. I was just going to say that, like, talking about the origin, this new Gundam anime, people should not watch it or watch it. I don't gain anything from you watching it or not watching it. I'm just going to say my opinion. I need to see more episodes before I make an opinion on it. Yeah. But like, I would rather watch the cyberpunk anime than this shit. And the cyber anime is like fucking gold. It hurts fun. Uh, Josh, you would love the it. The cyberpunk <laughs> anime is apparently really good. Really Josh, oh. you would love it. Oh. You would love it. Oh. I think you would like it a lot. Mm. Literally, one of the main characters is literally just a fucking big, massive dude with a gun in his arm. Cool. Yeah, uh, I think he would love it. As you do. So uh, I think you should watch it tonight. Oh, well, I'll figure it away. But, uh, right. you know, <laughs> we should figure out uh, we should figure out a way of how we can uh, make a tier list out of uh, different diversities. No, based no, in we the, shouldn't. Based in the uh, <laughs> Overwatch universe. Uh, and thing is, so I posted this before and Alan, it sounded like you didn't really have time to look at the original post, which is too bad because. No, I, a... I, read, I read it. I read it the next day. OK, I read it, too. Oh, my God. Yeah, it is legit competitive racism. Yeah, they, so it's it, and it's way worse than I thought. I oh, it's, love it's it. distance from California. Yeah, so oh, here's, that's I, what I, it I, is. I gotta, I gotta get the meme, but it, it's, it, it's the meme of the guy holding up a fucking test tube, doing finally competitive racism. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm just like, oh my god! And yeah. this is the shit that we've been warning about for years. Where all of a sudden we're sitting there, we're looking at this, and they somehow shove their heads so far up their ass that now they're just circling each other. Like we're sitting there watching these people going, "Huh, it can't get much weirder than this." Huh, it can't get it's, much worse than this. Yeah. Well, here's the weird thing too is that like there's also I got the video clip from uh, the Bully versus uh, YouTube channel when they do Castle Super Beasts for their podcast. Yeah. They talk about uh, like the whole thing and go through the list and different things that they notice about how they do the diversity, and it's just. Yeah, it just goes to show, like, the further away that the person is from California, the more and more, like, high on the charts they get. And it's just like, what? it's not even it's not even that. Yeah. And it's also, it, it, it's, it's also it's also no, it's <laughs> it, oh, man, because <sighs> like uh, or I don't know how this is, but uh, Orissa, Orissa, the, the fucking centaur robot. Yeah. Is, is like a, a f is is a a and Bastion is a e or, and I'm like part of my what? French s she's an s tier and I'm just they're going like fucking what I'm like yo he's a robot that transforms yep. and he doesn't speak he is I, like genuinely I consider him way more entertaining than uh than, uh, than Cyrus or whatever her name is yeah um and like I, like I just like I sit there like because the, the voice actor for fucking What's her name? Symmetra. I was like, oh, she's autistic. And this. I'm just like, oh, what? my God. Yeah. Well, it, well and then you just go through the list oh. and start realizing, oh, they were just trying to add points just so they can put out a character or some shit or like, God, Christ. Yeah. Like, and this, it, yeah. Well, no, it gets even worse than that, because you remember that time period that we had where literally like this is right when Overwatch started dying and everyone was like suddenly kind of going, hold on. Overwatch is kind of getting bad. And then like you're sitting there, you're watching it. You're like, huh? And then you look at Blizzard and they do something really stupid. And you're like, that's really stupid. And then next week, all of a sudden you find out that they made a character gay. Like this confirms that. Like that's the that's the thing that shocks me. It's like they sat there and they made a I believe they said it. Soldier 76 is not listed anywhere as gay on the chart. But his presumably later charts, it's almost as if his orientations changed solely for some pure smoke smokescreen for some other Blizzard issue. Yep. Yeah. Like, there's stuff in there that just doesn't make sense. Like, they made, um... They decided that it was a really good idea in order to, like, literally lo knock down Koreans because they know what Blizzard is. Like, it just gets worse and worse as you go. Yep. 
uh, I think the the <laughs> the more hilarious one is yeah, like you pointed out, like for uh, like body, uh, what was it? I think it was like body type slash like uh, oh, from where the person is. They, like the, there's apparently, uh, you know, Japan, Asian countries, India, they're all high on the charts. But yet the f these fake ass robots you get shoot everywhere from either the highest poles or the lowest poles possible. No in between whatsoever. I, I, should, I, I think I know why uh, uh, Arissa, whatever fucking uh, <laughs> centaur robot, babe. Yep. Um, scored so high because I just remember her crater is a little girl from Africa. <laughs> yep. Yep. So probably that's why. Um, yeah. Also, okay. So you, the moment you actually stop and think about Overwatch's world, so much of the world building falls apart. Yeah, it just it started very cool. No, it doesn't start cool. Like the moment you're like, okay, the over the Overwatch is, uh, is created to counter a certain number of things in response to the Omnic Wars. All right, fine. Yes, and it overstays. Yeah, no, uh, that that tracks. That hap that's happened a lot in history. The CIA, the FBI, the ATF. Um, <laughs> I can list off a bunch of organizations that, after they fulfilled their purpose, they just stuck around and did more. Are um, you just saying that? Uh, are you saying that um, the, 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 Overwatch the, 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 is? Yeah, that's beside the point. I, I gotta. I, the, the, there is a point to the ending point of this. Um. When you follow, but when the moment you follow like any of the other countries and the way that the world kind of acts around a certain thing, like the Omnix, yeah. you start to realize that it kind of falls apart. It's like, oh, well, look at these spiritual Omnix who are like the Buddhists. And I'm like, cool, still an Omnic should probably be put the fuck down right off the bat because we just fought a war that. What, you got to realize, like you look at things like from the the Bastion, the Bastion like character video and the Reinhardt character video, and you just see how absolutely horrible that war was going. Yeah, like it wasn't good. Dude, like most of Europe was ravaged. Russia's still fighting the war with the Omnics. Same with Korea and Japan, China as well. Like Omnics are still a threat. And like I'm trying to like I, like you try to wrap your mind around some of these things with like certain uh, with certain conversations that come up. Like if the Omics were were droids, not an not um, um not androids, Artificial. yeah, yeah, I would I would probably be a little bit more forgiving for it. Where like you have like um, maybe minor alterations where like these dro they're droids where they're like fast processing thinking, but they're still limited to number set of responses. Um, but each Omnic is like an individual, like both an individual and yet connected to the same network, which just fucking is a massive red flag because they're like, oh, well, you need to have the Alpha Core. And I'm like, I want you to stop and think about what you just said and understand that Russia, uh, Russia, Korea and China are all dealing with Alpha Cores in their areas. There are three there and there's number uncounted for why the fuck are the Omnics still aligned? Um... Russia, is, by the way, out of all the nations in the world, Russia's correct to deal with the problem until they fucked up Russia's plotline. Holy fuck. Oh, um, oh God. I, I don't want to know. Um, they made uh, Russia. They, uh, the, the Russians have a secret deal with the Omnics that they'll keep fighting the Omnics, but they'll get secret technology from them. I'm just like, that's such a fucking dumb thing. And it's the entire point of like undermining uh, Zarya's fucking faith in her nation. I'm like, oh, my God, you had to fucking ruin the only nationalist in the game. That's not even a joke. She's the only one who's like a nationalist. She's like for Russia. And they undermined it in just fucking a single fucking video or a single fucking comic, which is just fucking dumb. Um, then you think about how the Omnics are and how they're developed and they try to fight for human rights. And you're like, but you're fucking robots. It's like, well, but we have souls. And I'm like, Cool, still fucking robots. Uh, uh, yeah, man. I, I mean, a lot of it doesn't then, really add up. And, and, and then, this is what thirty years, uh, not even thirty years after the, the Omnic Wars. Mm -hmm. No, it's more. It's about thirty years after the Omnic. Wars. Reinhardt's like 20, 28, 20, like, uh, 
Anna and Reinhardt are, I think, 60. They both fought in the Omnic War. Yeah. And, yeah, and they're, but they were young when they fought in the Omnic War. They were young when they joined Overwatch. So they were probably like 24, 25 or something like that. So it's been like, it's been about like 30 years. And the moment you stop and think about that, a lot of people don't understand that wars aren't, wars of that destructive capability have long reaching consequences. Because I can look at three major war conflicts that that happened, and I can point to you how the conflicts developed, uh, changed the fucking course of the, the history around that period. Well, World War I, they... one. No, World War not... One and World no, War Two. No, 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 no. World War Two. Yeah. The Napoleonic Wars. Oh yeah, that one's a good one. And the Thirty Years' War. What's the Thirty Year War? Uh, a religious war in Europe that happened between. Fifteen. Oh, no. is that the one involving Crusaders and stuff? No, 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 no. This is the Protestants versus the Catholics in, in Germany. Oh. And it happens from sixteen eighteen to sixteen forty eight. And okay. boy, oh boy, like there's a city that gets ap- just. Wait. Let me put it this way: there's a single city called Mar- uh, Marburg, uh, Margeberg. Mergeburg. Um, that is wiped off the map because of this war in one battle. Oh. Um, it gets cool, laid right? siege to, um, and then the Catholics get into such an incensed rage or something, I don't know, that there's like six, like 700 people left after the, after the, after the, after, the, after like all said and done of the city. Yeah. The city is burnt sense. down. And it's like a lot of people don't understand. Like, it, it, like it's it created world power. It created the local great powers of Sweden, France, and um, it diminished no the Holy Roman Empire. It started the, it started to create the Habsburg dynasty down in uh, Austro Hungaria. It started the creation uh, started the uh, general creation of Prussia as a result of Sweden becoming a great power. Poland got put into check. Russia, like it, like the Thirty Years' War was a major thing that happened in Europe. And then you have the Napoleonic War, which started the course of Prussia becoming the German Empire, France becoming a uh, a maintaining st- uh, world power status, but becoming a lesser power next to Eng- uh, becoming second place basically to England. Um, Russia goes from this kind of backwater country to a world stage player. Austro-Hungary beca- becomes like the major diplomat of Europe, um, and like all these big things happen. Okay because of this so they changed the, how the map is drawn at, after 16 uh 16 15 16 16 that and then you have of, of course world war ii where you have just two power blocks that divide up the world technically three but the third one kind of just gets rolled into the other one um and it's just like each one had such long-lasting consequences and even after 30 or 40 years, they were still visible. And there's no way Omnics would have been allowed to be around in any country. Any that were involved in wars against the Omnics. Like, this isn't like, hey, yeah, well, we'll maybe let, like, and like, it, like you got to realize the Omnics were like an existential crisis that just like, oh, my God. The more I think about it, the more frustrated I get about the fucking the, the world that is Overwatch. Like, I love some of the characters. I love Reinhardt. I love fucking um, Jesse McCree. I love Hanzo. Um, I love Sombra. I love fucking... Well, what's, what's her name? Ash? Am I here alone now? <laughs> Sorry. Do you care? Because like I know, I know Jeff's gone. Cause he put the BRB in the chat. Uh, I was just like, I'm rambling on, and I'm looking for words, but you like, I'm like, nobody's talking. <laughs> and I know I just had like my, my like fucking well, angry ramble about what? the world building and fucking. Because I was starting to like, I, I hate the world building and fucking Overwatch. I love certain characters. I listed off of some num- number of characters, and I got stuck at a character's name, and I was like Ash, and there was dead silence here for a minute there, Jeff. Yeah. And I was just like, am I alone now? Did John like? And Josh is like, oh, what? I was like, fucking goddamn. It's- I was going to say, since we're kind of rambling mode again, we can switch topics again. Well, no, I was just no. going to say, well, like, okay, I actually have to ask you about this, Josh. Okay. How bad do you think this is? The whole thing? Like, the chart? The yeah. chart? I, I can see 
like again when this was brought up before i saw it over on like again the the castle super beast they were talking about like uh how they did have this chart they're not quote unquote not using the chart just to op they're just trying to opease their fucking higher ups because the higher ups probably are not in touch whatsoever with anything other than what money smells like and touching money uh so like and again quote unquote <laughs> you can't a quote unquote like use this to not influence their decisions blah 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 but now you start looking looking at this chart looking back and forth between the characters and you just start realizing oh god th oh god th this is why we have certain characters there is in the fucking game like because he got oh it's like 50 points but we should throw them in they're real good they got an eye patch. You got four limbs that replace robots. Oh, is this tr it, transgender? You, maybe like you, you see, you, there are things you sit down and you look at and you go, "What the fuck?" Like it uh. suddenly makes sense. Like the reason why Arissa exists. It suddenly makes sense why they said that. Uh, who is the DJ? I forget his name. Lucio. The, it suddenly makes sense why he doesn't have robot legs. Yep. Like, like stupid things like that suddenly make sense. And then, like, you get into, like, stuff where you're like, oh, okay. Like, they're doing, like, interesting things. And then you see that and you're like, man, that just kind of ruins the character a little bit. Yep. It just makes the game, like, it makes it worse actively. <laughs> and, like, I don't know, man. It's just really fucking weird to see this from a multinational corporation that. Like you boil down everything to math and you start realizing, you know, your point of view doesn't mean anything to a person who lives in another country because he because his point of view is not your point of view. So it doesn't yeah. mean shit like uh, there. There is also there's also the other big thing. Which is, uh, oh, my God. Uh, I you, you can I'm going to boil this down to math. Okay, so what are the? I actually think I'm going to tie this into a topic I want to talk about. Uh, I know yeah. I've rambled this entire fucking podcast. This is, well, I'm, yeah, not even, yeah. I'm not even on my topic yet, and I haven't posted the topic in the chat because I don't want to fucking spoil it. Oh boy, um, oh boy. Alan's going to be um, like talking about cyberpunk or something like that. No, 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 no. Um, like, like there's a lyric in a song that just came out that uh, what did, what determines what is right is uh, right or wrong, morals or mathematics. And, like, by that definition, if you go with the way Overwatch is, or Blizzard is doing their shit, um, boy, oh, boy, um, they're arguing mathematics, and if that's the case, then people like uh, Fritz Haber, who, this, which is my second, which is my topic, uh, because Sabaton released a song about that. But that's that's the entire point of the argument is like, well, is this guy a good guy or is he a bad guy because of what he's done or to this, that, of that. And all these, all these fucking moral and fucking complicated questions that can't be answered easily. But evidently that doesn't matter because I guess you can be like simple mathematics does actually equate to, yeah, no, I am correct. Um, and we're going to move on to my next topic now. Are we? Sabaton, Sabaton released a new song. Oh boy. And it's a fucking banger, even though I kind of think it's a little bit weak, but it's still fucking really good to listen to. I haven't listened Came to out it of, fully. Um, Hold on. Sabaton. I'm just going to get the, the lyric video. I actually generally love it. Um, uh, The reason why I think it's weak is because there's some parts of the song where I'm like, I don't think that's the turn of phrase you should have. I don't think that's the turn of phrase you should have used. I think you should have used something like this, this, X, X, X. A small thing. It's small things for me with that one. Um, so the song everyone is called Father. Yeah, I already mentioned that. Yeah, it's about um, um, uh, Fritz Haber, a German scientist who helped develop the um, how to help create ammonia for um, ammonia, ammonia acid and stuff like that. So they could like f help fertilize fields and stuff like that, and then he uh, uh, paired up with uh, Hans Bosch. Hans Bosch, mm -hmm. I think that's the name. Um, and then they helped improve the process and helped feed the world basically. 
and the World War One started, and he is known as the father of chemical warfare because he created um, chlorine gas, mustard gas, and a number of other chemical agents as well because he wanted to speed up the war and get it done over quick. Um, but that didn't happen because that that was just not the nature of the war. Um, and a lot of people like again, if you like, if you just generally think about it like that, well, is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? Like, and as he said in in a discussion uh, after the war or before the war, uh, in times of peace, I am I am the man of the world. In times of war, uh, in times of war, I belong to the fatherland. Stuff like that. Like it, it's very like noble and stuff like that. But at the same time, you're kind of like sitting there going, "Oh, well, is this?" And I posted the song in the chat. If Jeff wants, he'll can post. I'm it. listening to it. Yeah, um, I don't think Josh is listening. So. What? Who? Huh? What? Oh, come on, bitch! Are you gonna listen to Sabaton, man? Oh, yeah, they're good. Okay, oh, yeah, you're gonna I listen to their new song. The song I just posted the chat. That was oh. the question I was asking. <laughs> what the fuck, Josh? <laughs> Josh asshole? is like too busy listening to rap now. He's like becoming one of those guys. Oh, he's fucking. If he's oh. listening to fucking rap, he's listening. He's to listening no, to 50 I'm Cent. listening to prog metal. That's what I'm listening. <laughs> oh, so just, just as bad trash. Oh, <laughs> Josh, I'm gonna hey. fucking. Yeah, no, he knows. He knows I'm right because if he was, because he knows, he knows I'm not just right. He knows that he, if he like actually looks deep in his soul and thinks about it, he knows. I'm just a sucker for clean arts. vocals. I'm a sucker for I'm a sucker for clean vocals too. Yeah, but prog rock is not good. <laughs> it's. I mean, I do have to search to find the prog metal that I like. Yes, you gotta search for it. Yeah, you gotta search I like, for it. I, I like my I like my power metal because a lot of the power metal bands are pretty good. Yeah, I feel um, although they feel samey for the most part. Well, that's the problem with a lot of a lot of genres when you look at like specific like the moment you start breaking metal into like specific genres and stuff like that. You've got folk metal, you've got power metal, you've got trash metal. Sorry, I, I my, sorry, slip the tongue there. Thrash metal, which is just better known as trash. Um, hey, you shut your horror mouth. Uh, fuck off i'm not yeah. wrong you fucking know it or groove metal um, but that's slippery next that's... thing you know you're gonna say dragon force is bad and i'm gonna be very sad dragon force is power metal yeah that's power metal and yeah it is actually power metal they are like i think one of the earliest power metal band as far as i know i think um mind you dragon force is okay they're they got famous off a couple songs and that's not a bad thing but at the same time they're not they're not bad. They're just not. Or they're not great. I'll, I'll correct that statement. They're good. They're just not great. Mm. Um. Then you look at things like, of course, you got fucking rap. Rap, you really can't break down into anything other than just rap. I mean, you there. I when I, mean, I you technically got R. You technically got R and B. But yeah, I R and B is when fucking, I'm when I'm listening to like uh, an, a rap artist of some sort. It has to be not of ill repute. <laughs> I, here's the thing. I, I do have a couple of rap artists that I go. I could point out and go, this is very good. He's really good at what he does. But at the same time, I I start realizing, oh, they're just not gangster or mumble rapping or whatever. It's like I can clearly hear what they're saying. I can kind of like maybe they're kind of like doing fast you know rhythm rapping or something but it's like i could still understand what's going on plus they're not rapping about fucking shoes or shooting people and it's or, like or or, or hot hose yeah or, um, hose or, or drugs gun, cars or something, something a little they're more substance about, they're they're not rapping so you know about actual hose, music drugs, good stuff. Rap, uh, gu- uh gangsters violence like the moment you actually break down a lot of rap like a solid like 90 percent of it is just fucking trash and I, <laughs> yeah. I i i refused like i have somebody who tried to let me listen to rap music one time and i sat there and i listened to the whole song it's like wasn't that fucking cool i'm like no it's fucking trash dude he's like what's good music to you and i fucking put on fucking um not dreadnought um oh it's from i gotta i gotta uh i put on bismarck hmm Oh, sorry, not Brismark, Great War. I put on Great War because this was just before Brismark came out. And I fucking just fucking blast that. I'm like, this is good music. And he's like, but you're not rocking out to it. It's like, because I don't have to rock out to enjoy it. I'm just enjoying it, hearing it. And like, and like I've I've never been fond of like any, a lot of rap. I like Eminem's early stuff. 
uh, things like Tin uh, Tin Soldier, um, Will the Real Ships Lady. Yeah, like I like his older spoof stuff and stuff in like the early two thousands. Yeah, but I don't like a lot of his newer stuff. I, he, he's not a he's a great fucking rapper, but he's also kind of just. I don't want to say he's boring. I'm looking for a word. Um, kind of uncomplicated. Ah. Uh. Like, it, and that's more no, more newer now than what it was back in the day. Because, um... Oh, what is it? The song, uh, to, uh, Around the Outside, Around the Outside, Around the Outside. Oh. Uh, guess, guess Who's Back? That's the song. Yeah, and that entire song is just about like, hey, I fuck, I beat censorship, and that's the entire point of the song. It's just like, hey, this is fucking bullshit that I get da 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 da, and all this other stupid shit. And yet, like nowadays, you hear him listen. He's he's he is a shadow. And Eminem. it's not even like good rap now. It's just he's going through the motions, and it's not very good. Well, no, now he's a dad. Did you hear? No, he's been a dad for a while now. Dude. Yeah. Well, like, no, like, like I one, think of my, one of my one of my favorite songs is um, Tin Soldier. Tin uh, Tin Tin, Tin Soldier is pretty good. Yeah. Um, that's the, that's one of my favorite songs from because all it is is him singing about being a dad and how he's failing. And I'm like, hey, that's pretty ironic. Maybe you should stop being a rapper then. There's one where he's talking about being. It, there's one where he's talking about when Boogie died or um, Tupac. Somebody died. Yeah, that's in, that's uh, before the 2000s. It's in the 90s. They yeah. sung that one. Yeah, and again, and like, there's a there's a bunch of really good Eminem songs. I'll say that much. Uh, I've been <laughs> now we're uh, talking uh, about there's also lo- there's also losing lose yourself, and I think there's also Mockingbird. Is also. Yeah, Mockingbird is yeah. pretty good. Uh, um. Also, I, I'm remembering two different rap artists I like. It was one is Bus Driver. The second is Deltron. Uh, Deltron. Uh, Deltron, you heard of him. If you play Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2. It's literally the one track that you probably go. You heard you probably heard the catch uh, the hook and then you go, what is this? And then you start hearing it. And you're like, oh, this is pretty good. You just let it rip. You didn't want to actually edit the playlist because it was actually a good song. Uh, what was that? I think that's Get Funky by Deltron. But uh, and another one is Bus Driver, which I've heard. I think a friend showed me Bus Driver or I heard that from Tony Hawk Pro Skater as well. Hmm. And uh, that one was just like, oh, the, the rapping is like very fast. And also he's talking about concepts of. <laughs> buying real estate on moon on the moon and like uh, like just shit that's out there and just not talking about again cars get violence whatever it's just okay. weird shit so it's weird shit that we like yeah exactly okay is it weird is it as weird as uh our next topic I'm trying to find our next topic is it as weird as the mario movie oh yeah uh, is, is it is it as weird as that? Um, I don't know. Is it like is it live action? Like, I think I can only watch it if it's in live action. No, it's actually like animated. So thus, like it looks good. So oh, if the CG movie. Oh, yeah, it's 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 going to look good. <laughs> it looks great. <laughs> it actually looks really good. Yeah. And then Chris Pratt and then Mario opens a stupid fucking mouth. And you're like, that's just Chris Pratt trying to put on a Brooklyn accent. Yep, he. I mean, he only says like a couple of words, but then everyone just starts immediately calling him out. And I'm like, I don't know, maybe when he has another trailer and he says more lines, then I think maybe. It, I, I think that Jack Black is perfect r- as Bowser. Him as yeah. Bowser is fucking phenomenal. Okay, I good. Genuinely, okay. All right, I have. I, I like. I was very tepid about Jack Black and fucking Bowser. And then I heard him, and I'm like, no, he fucking did it. He's fucking perfect. I have, like, I, you don't hear Chris Pratt as Mario no, in the you trailer, don't. though. So, like, you hear him making noise and stuff like that, but it's, you don't hear him. It, it's more like you hear, like, it's 
a single phrase where is Jack Black? Who can stop me? And it's just like, yes. And I'm actually I'm actually more hyped to see that movie for Jack Black as Bowser. <laughs> yeah. Than Chris I mean, Pratt as Mario. And yeah. like my favorite and Mario isn't even a Mario and Bowser aren't even my favorite characters in that franchise. That's Luigi. Like, and I'm excited to see like hear what Luigi sounds like. But like I at well, the they same show time, like, a little uh, bit of it. They show a little bit of it at the end. There's yeah. a little bit of it. But like no, like I agree with you. Jack Black was perfect casting. I don't think that and like I don't understand why everyone hates Chris Pratt. I mean the guy's really good in terminal lists. The guy's really good in like a bunch of actual like shows and movies that he does. But like man, like I don't know, man. I think I need to watch I need to see more of his like acting and stuff like that in that movie in order to actually like you know make a decision, right? If that makes sense. And, oh, man, I just, I kind of am excited, if that makes sense, about that movie. Um, But, yeah, anyways, yeah, we got to talk about that trailer a little bit. Did you guys uh, watch the entire direct or just the trailer? I just watched the trailer because I really don't care about the direct all that much. Mm. I haven't cared about a lot of Nintendo stuff in a while. Like, I'm excited to see what they do with fucking the new... Um, Zelda game, but at the mm. same time, I'm like, it's just Zelda Breath of the Wild 2.0. I'm not even mad about that because I hear, like, I've played some of Zelda Breath of the Wild and it's pretty fucking great. Yeah, that game's good. Um, yep. Uh, I, who else was it could be voicing any other characters? Uh, um, hang on. So, you know, the you know, the chief scientist in Pacific Rim? Uh huh. Yeah, he's a Luigi. Oh. Wait, what? Charlie? Charlie? Fuck off. Charlie's Luigi. Oh, uh, that's not going to sound good because he has it an annoying sounds okay. voice. It honestly sounds okay because there's a little bit of him in the trailer. <laughs> yeah, but, well, well, yeah, but it's it's him screaming in panic. I mean, that yeah. might just be a placeholder sound effect, too. That, I'm, I, yeah. I still don't know why they didn't just go with the original two American voice actors. Like he's still I mean, the, that's the thing, both, right? They're both still alive. I don't know why. And I'm like, why Chris Pratt? Chris Pratt isn't like, I would have been okay with like either like a really Italian voice, like a very thick uh, uh, accent, a two Italian thick accent uh, voice actors, or two fucking Brooklyn boys just to fucking meme on the audio. Just like, yeah, here's some really thick Brooklyn accents. Get Go a Sopranos ham. actor or to no, voice no, no. Mario. Just because cause, cause cause the, the Brooklyn accent is throwback to the, the Mario movie from like, 1998 or something like that. The cult classic, the good. You mean the, a, the, a, the, a, the yeah, the cult classic, the, yeah. The the one that should not be called Mario, and it would be like you would be like, oh yeah, this could this I actually enjoy this because it's not a bad movie. That movie's not bad. Like it, it's the thing that makes it bad is you're like, oh Mario Brothers, I can't wait to look at it and see it, and you're like. Oh no, this has nothing to do with Mario Brothers. This literally has nothing to do with it. Absolutely nothing. You could change every single aspect of that movie. Movie. You could change all of the characters' names and it would still be a good movie at the end of the day. Nintendo didn't even need to be involved and that movie was okay. Um anyways, Yep. Uh, yeah. Mario. Alan, you were saying? Uh, I don't know. Oh, like, I thought, disco. That kind of thought fucking... The, no. the, the, the very disco way of getting uh, getting out of the game industry. Mm. <laughs> the uh, the uh, lead developer and creative leads uh, were fired uh, from their jobs. And... Uh, Basically, the uh, the people who made Disco help make Disco Elysium and the developers, they were fired. And at the same time, the company that owned them uh, and, the, and the IP immediately turned around and said, hey, microtransactions, aren't those cool? Look, <laughs> sounds like they were oh, like, they were like, right. hey, yeah, sounds like to me, like they sat there and they were like, huh, this doesn't make money. I mean, this is, was the most critically acclaimed thing possible. 
because it went this hard into the subject matter that it did. Like, if anything, if this was such a hard word of mouth thing to the point of like, I don't th people who are in the know got it like they must have made some sort of money. Yeah, I, I have a, well, I even have a my Steam account. And I still haven't bothered to kick it on yet. It's really good. Pick up the coffee mug. <laughs> I'll try. No, 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 Josh, you don't understand. You got to pick up the coffee mug. <laughs> yep. OK, but but still, like the way this company is treating, like probably the oh, best pe people on their team and then just double down on fucking microtransaction, whatever for their next project. It's like, I guess Disco 2 is not going to happen. I mean, here's the thing is like, that could mean a lot of things that could mean like, hey, like maybe the project is just stalled and they were the heads of the company were like, hey, like we're sinking money into you. Like what's going on? And the updates were just not there. So they were like, OK, fine, you're gone. Like after enough time, that could mean any number of things. Right. We don't know. Yeah. But but to, like, but to immediately turn around and then just go microtransactions and that rad just feels so dirty and seedy. That could be any number of things, though. That could be people being like, hey, maybe instead of like us doing. But at like, the same time, it's the timing of this. Yeah, no. Like, and that's that's the thing, right? Yeah, it's this. It's the timing. Like, that's been this entire fucking thing about. Overwatch 2, too. Like, right like like it's like oh like overwatch 2 gets out and then we find out that they have a race tier list this is like oh bunch three devs get fired from this game that is critically acclaimed really well done man they're probably gonna land on their feet because disco elysium is a fucking good game yeah and and then and then we're like huh that's 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 really weird and then the next paragraph is like oh yeah they're they're hiring a microtransaction developer and you're like Huh. Yep. I I wonder what the next project's going to be. I swear if it's Disco Disco Elysium 2 with microtransactions, I'd be like, what what could that possibly be? What like, is even that going to be? Like, I could like I've seen some gameplay and I've seen like, you know, tad snippets of the game, and I'm like whatever this is going to be in the future is going to fall so fucking short. Like it's not going to, it's going to take exactly zero steps before it falls and then it breaks its face entirely. Like, People, like I, I don't, I'm, I'm so confused. I, <laughs> that, by the way, this is, this is something that's happening with Halo Infinite right now too, is they're getting like, they're losing like, Head of staff. They lost their head of staff, mind you. He hasn't released a good game since fucking Halo Four, so he good fucking riddance. Um, Wait, Frank O'Connor left? I think Frank O'Connor. Uh, the guy who's been in charge of three four three since. No, uh, Brenda left. Yeah, Brenda. Brendan. Bonnie Ross. I think so. Whatever. Bonnie Ross he, left three for three. Yeah, um, and he has outside of fucking Halo Four, his the games haven't the game he's been a part of it just fucking struggle and uh, it's actually the reason why like a lot of people are kind of getting pissed off with fucking 343 right now it's like they're focusing on the wrong things and it's actually the reason why i'm worried for fucking cd project red because cd project red is going to be fucking doing some things related to the uh oh what is it the estp thing whatever it's called What? And like it's like it's like deter it's determined by like your like diversity stuff like that. Oh, ESG. Yeah, the ESG stuff because like they're bending the knee to that instead of being like, and it's just like, oh my god, fuck off! It's just you're wa you're watching this shit happen, and you're just like, I mean, why is why is this becoming a norm? Because because the world has to go to shit. That's that's really what I can think of. It's like. Instead of like it, right now, we are living in a time and age where instead of like us having to, you know, we don't get the great creative projects. We get cultural stagnation. We don't get the We've people. Got, we don't get nothing. We don't have anything new. Mm -hmm. Nothing new has been coming out. Everything's just been remakes and reimaginings and re. Uh... Here's Halo 27. Do you want to play the game? 
Yeah, people wonder why, like, I'm so fucking kind of just done with everything. A well, lot like, of stuff that I used to like. Well, like, it's it's weird because it's like, it's like, I look at, like, Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk's based on a fucking tabletop game. Yeah. It's great. The, and it's well, fantastic. The CD, CD Projekt Red game is, it, well, they over, it's okay. they over promised it's good, but it's not great. Yeah. Um, I agree. I agree with some. I agree with Razor Fist. His evaluation is like they overpromised, and because of that, the game got fucking lampooned for it. Um, but it's still a good game. It's actually well, a fairly. Um, well, but, like you, you have two problems with that it too. It's like it's like you go to these game developers and you say, "Hey guys, like we should be trying to make something new," and and they go, "Well, nobody would buy it then. Why? Why would they buy? Why would they buy something new?" And it's like it's like well. Because it's new and it's interesting and it might be a really good thing. Oh well, no, we we just have to continue shipping new things. And you're like, no, that that's that's a really stupid idea. Like that's a really stupid idea. And like, here's a franchise that's new, that's critically acclaimed, that everyone I talk to loves. Out of their mind, everyone who plays Disco Elysium is like, it's a great game. It's a very good. Game. It's a fantastic game. It's a dude. Wonderful. Look, um, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna say the main character is my spirit animal because it's like he just wakes up in a drunken stupor, and I'm like, oh yeah, I, I would do that. That's me. I would totally fucking do that. Like this is the quintessential main char- male character because he just wakes up nowadays and he's like, fuck it, I'm just gonna get shit faced. That was the first thing he did. Yeah. But like, it, I don't know, man. Like it just feels like as if like we're in this point right now where. Instead of like and like and like this speaks to Disco Lee's the point topic point that Josh was talking about, where it's like it just feels like instead of like us having like cool and interesting new products where maybe things aren't all about money, it's like no, everything's about money now and like you get shit on because fuck you. I mean, it's always been about money, but before I spe- I kinda think internet ruined it, but still before, especially in the 90s and early 2000s, it was more about that crazy new thing that comes out. It's just caught on fire. And oh, man, look at this crazy new thing. That's rad. But now time has moved on and kept shifting and shifting and shifting over towards that's easily consistent for the normies to get into. Then it comes to this point of like, oh, the normies will always do the normie thing because they can't see pass out in front of their face. So have you been <laughs> like... I mean, Josh, what happened to you? You sound like me. <laughs> Here's the thing: like, for the most part, like we're we're deep in the trenches. We kind of know what we're looking for and what we're looking at. But when it comes to people who just play a game on the weekend and that's it, or maybe even play a game for five hours at a week and that's about it, like, yeah, they're gonna play a shooty shoot for that time and that's about it. They're gonna play a, a hockey, a sports title, or something, and that's about it. So. Like, that's the reason why these things keep existing and keep going, because that breaks in whatever money that they want. I actually had this conversation with one of my classmates at Nate before uh, before he called me a Nazi and moved on with his life. <laughs> I'm not joking. The dude called me a Nazi. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah. why are you calling me a Nazi? And he goes, because you're a Nazi. I'm like, OK, so you're calling me a Nazi. Yeah, because that, that, I, we're going, you're falling off a tangent. That you don't want to go down. Yes. You call me a Nazi because I said that communism is bad. Cool. <laughs> Yeah, anyways, focus um, on stay on target. So, it, like, he got really angry one time because he goes, well, like, like we can't keep having the same games. And, like, the reason why FIFA is really good is because FIFA allows EA to make the interesting titles. This is right around the time of, like, Anthem coming out and stuff like that. And right before Anthem fucking fell on its face. Fell on its face, face, killed, uh, possibly did a lot more damage than it should have. You know, fun things. Um, but like, anyways, like I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh, well, you know, it's fine. Yeah. FIFA allows and funds the development of all these other games and it does a really good job. Job. We need FIFA to exist because it allows us to get games like Lost and Random and stuff like that. And like, I have no problem with corporations having their money makers. I do have a problem when like. I look for a new interesting title and everything's just sequels. Like Death Stranding. Death Stranding's not perfect, but Death Stranding's a pretty interesting game. Death. Uh, mm. 
It is made by a crazy Japanese man, but it's pretty interesting. It's interesting. I wouldn't call it good. I wouldn't even call it. I don't even know if it should be called interesting, in all honesty. Uh, Ultra Kill. Ultra Kill is a very good video yes. game. Yes, that I will. Like, like I, Inscription. Like, you have all of these independent games that just come out, and they're just solid, good, fun games. Okay, I have I have to counter that. Um, ninety five percent of the, uh, indie games that come out are fucking trash, and of the five remaining percent, um, seventy percent of that is okay. I I know I know the actual ratio for fucking indie games. That 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 is like your extremely cherry pick. But the problem is that a lot of modern, a lot of the big triple A games. Start making anything good anymore. They're not good. They're just Sorry. not as fun as they used to be. Like, I don't know, man. I remember when Halo Infinite came out and everyone was happy about it. And then the game just dumped itself off a cliff. It was like, it watch. Dump, it didn't dump itself. Uh, it fumbled, it fumbled off after a year. Like, we've been waiting for big updates and stuff like that in. No, 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 I got it, I got it, I got it. You know the opening scene of Tekken 7, where you're, like, watching, like... No, I, think I it's don't play Tekken, so, like... Okay. You know what Tekken 7 is? No, I don't, like, fucking fighting games. Josh, 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 to explain this to you. You know Tekken 7? The opening of Tekken 7? Yeah. Yeah, you know the scene where, like, Kazuya... I think it's Kazuya, throws the kid off the cliff? Oh, uh, Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh-huh. It's it's like that. 343 did that to Halo Infinite. They just threw it off a cliff. And just, they're going like, all right, if it's a good sun, it's... it'll survive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did, it, did it curl it back up? A, did it, they, did it curl back up? I don't know. They threw it into a volcano and then said, said should be fine. <laughs> That's what 343 did. And that's what the entire that's that's what every single major like studio publisher franchise has done for the past like I don't know three years. It every is sing- actually just kind of like sad. Just, like Disney just takes Star Wars by its hand and just walked over to the edge and just just yeeted it. Up the edge, and they sat there and said, "Well, this one fell into the lava." Oh well, uh, uh, I looked around, saw Marvel there, and then just put like, "You, you go off the edge now." <laughs> um, God, that was fucking depressing. All right, let's talk. No, no, no. We gotta talk about something else. Oh no, Do we we got two other we've things. Been, we've been at this for an hour, dude. We gotta talk about Intel's GPU. Josh, don't buy Intel's GPU. It's bad. Okay. Okay. All right. We've talked about it. Yeah. Um. It's bad. People shouldn't buy it. It's horrible. It's it's we'll, not as we'll good. We'll talk about. We'll, we'll bring this topic back up next week. We don't we'll fucking do have more. Rambling. Yeah. When Alan's not upset. <laughs> um. Thank you, everyone. Topic, what other topic do you fucking have there? We gotta talk about the most expensive MTG product announced, and we gotta oh, talk. About... No, right, that happened. Right, and Not, we gotta no. talk about the shill hat. Okay, well, we're gonna talk about that next week. Okay. So, thank you everyone for listening to the Black Man Games podcast. You will be listening to us talk about bullshit next week. Alternatively, we can record tomorrow. No, and do more I'm, bullshit. no, I'm not. I got shit to do tomorrow. Same here. I've got fucking Thanksgiving to go through. I'm pretty sure just both me and Josh do too. So anyways, yep. thank you everyone. Have a great night. You can listen to us every Thursday on Black oh, Man Games. Josh, thank you. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> anyways. Thank you everyone for listening. You can listen to us every Thursday on Black Man Games, the podbean.com. You subscribe to us on your favorite podcasting app. Choice. Fuck. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Alan. Have a good night. Bye.
Okay, well, did you hear about what happened to my poor innocent dog? You got attacked, and then you got cut off, and then the, my computer died. Oh, and then I, I accidentally also crushed her tail by accident as well, because I'm a great owner. Crush her tail. like. So in my house, there's two chairs, and they're recliners, so you can recline in them. And Josh and use, I use those chairs in order to actually, like, you know, sit in them and then do our stuff. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so I I went to close my chair and move up so that way then I could take her for a walk before, you know, podcast. That was my thought process. So, so you caught her tail between the chair and the floor. Okay. So then she immediately panics and goes, what the fuck is going on here? So I lift up and she goes, she gets out and she's like, she's like, Putting her tail in between her legs, and I guess I caught it, and I'm like, "Oh, no, fuck. that that's that's a fear response." Hmm. She didn't catch her tail because if you caught her tail, it would have been a very very distinct sound. She yelped very much. Yeah, what? It, she more or less caught her by surprise, probably pinched her a bit. Nothing major. Yeah. yeah, and then and then she got attacked by like a, I think a pit bull or something like that. I don't know. A what? Um, like attacked? What? So, you've, you've been to my house, right? Yes. So, I was leaving the cul-de-sac in order to actually, like, take her for a walk. Yeah. And a guy's standing there, he's tying his shoe up, and he has his owner on leash, and he, I guess he dropped his the leash. owner the on dog, leash, eh? her, her, His dog's on leash. There you go. And then she chased after Macy, and Macy's, like, saying they're wrapping her around me. So, I think she got, Macy got a Q-nips in, and I think the other dog... Yeah. I think she's okay, though. She was whimpering all the way home, though. Yeah. Uh, let's sink in three, two, one.